Have you ever noticed how on some days you can stick with that healthy diet, but on others, you can't help but eat that sugary donut? Or perhaps you've noticed on some days, starting work is easy, while on others, it seems like it's the hardest thing to do. Both of these situations point to one thing. You've exhausted your willpower. And contrary to what you might think, your willpower is like a stamina bar in a video game. Use it up too quickly and you will be drawing under the pressure of your workload, but use it wisely and you will position yourself to use it in optimal performance for when it matters. To make sure you use it right, I'm going to show you five habits that I use to optimize my willpower every day. Number one, treat your willpower like it's a muscle. The concept of willpower was first introduced by a social psychologist named Roy Baumeister in the late 1990. Alongside his colleagues, Roy conducted an experiment with 67 participants. Each person was then placed in a room with a plate of freshly baked cookies. However, only half of the participants were allowed to eat the cookies. The other half were told that they couldn't eat the cookie and instead they had to eat radishes. During the experiment, those who weren't allowed to eat the cookies would stare at them. Ray and his team would then remove the cookies and the radishes from the room and asked the participants to finish a puzzle. The group that was allowed to eat the cookies spent less than half the time solving the puzzles over the group that wasn't allowed to eat the cookies. Those who had to use their willpower to not eat the cookies no longer had the energy to focus on solving the puzzle. They were just too tired. This phenomenon is known as ego depletion. The main idea here is that willpower and self-control draw from a finite pool of limited resources. And as these resources are used up throughout the day, our ability to use willpower or self-control diminishes in the same way that our muscles work. But the similarities don't stop there because what Roy also found is a link between glucose, which is a fast acting sugar. In a separate study, participants who had a drink with sugar had higher amounts of willpower over participants who had a glucose-free drink, much in the same way that consuming a sugary drink before a workout will give you more energy. Optimize your willpower, start treating it like a muscle. You wouldn't spend all day exercise, so don't spend all day trying to avoid that donut. Instead, find something healthy that will satisfy the craving like an apple or some berries. Otherwise, it's only a matter of time before you're walking away with a 12 pack of donuts. Number two, compound your habits. Imagine I'm trying to cut down fat for summer. I know I need to go outside and get my 10,000 steps in for the day, but I'm tired. It's been a long day. I would much rather sit on my couch. The 10,000 steps are something I have to do. Reading the book is something that I want to do. So why not try and compound the two? Instead of missing out on one or the other, I simply could turn on an audiobook and listen to the book that I want to read and then go out and do the steps that I know I need to do. The core idea here is that the want makes the should more appealing. In fact, Catherine Milkman from the University of Pennsylvania conducted a study using this exact technique. A group of participants were given nothing, while the other group was given iPods loaded with tempting audiobooks. Unsurprisingly, the group that had iPods had much higher gym attendance than the group that didn't have iPods, but it doesn't stop there. You can use this tactic for every area of your life. If I instead wanted to watch the latest episode of a TV show, I could easily go on a treadmill and watch that show while I'm getting my steps in. This way, you are still getting the benefits of the should while not tiring yourself from ego depletion like we mentioned in the previous tip. But even then, even with the attraction of doing something that I want to do and compounding my habits, your willpower still might not work. This is when you want to deploy habit anchoring. When it comes to building a habit, your motivation is pointless. Sure, it might give you the spark you need to get up and do what you need to do from time to time. But if you ask anyone that goes to the gym on a regular basis, they will tell you that half the time, they don't want to be there. What gets people there is their own willpower and self-control. And you can apply the same logic to every habit from large ones, like going to the gym, even small ones like flossing every day. In fact, despite this being one of the best habits you can do for your health, flossing is only done by 37% of the population. Why? Because no one can be bothered doing it. It takes willpower. And as we have now learned, willpower is a means to an end. But 
when you attach the habit of flossing your teeth before brushing your teeth, the chances of you doing this habit daily skyrocket because you have now anchored it. Habit anchoring is simple. You just attach that thing that you are trying to do with a habit that you already do. So rather than saying, I'm going to start flossing my teeth, you will instead start saying, I'm going to floss my teeth before I brush my teeth. And this is exactly how I develop a top of the line teeth hygiene routine every night. At first, I was just brushing my teeth. But then, through habit anchoring, I was able to develop the habit of flossing using mouthwash and also using my Primal Life Teeth Whitening Kit. This has been an absolute game changer. I've used several teeth whitening kits in the past and none of them have given me results like this one. But the best part is the confidence boost I've received from developing this habit. Gone are the days of being self-conscious about your smile. When you have a white smile, you smile more often, which makes you feel more confident. And better yet, a Princeton study found that confidence and willpower are closely linked. So to improve your health, your confidence, and your willpower, make sure you anchor your habits that also improve your health and your confidence. This is why I said anchoring habits like this teeth whitening kit to my brushing habit has been a game changer, an all natural formula to help you whiten and remineralize the teeth. And the best part is you wanna use habits that are simple. For example, for the teeth whitening, you just wanna put some gel on one of the trays. You put those trays in your mouth. You then use their blue light device, which will activate the product and whiten your teeth. And then it also has a red light treatment, which is for the health of your gums. You can choose one or do both at the same time. Leave the device in for about 16 minutes and you're good to go. And of course, I compound the habit. While my teeth are being whitened, I will also choose the outfit for the day while also completing my to-do list. If you guys wanna check out Primal Life Organics, my toothbrush, my floss, and all my oral care comes from them because of the high quality products that they produce. Use my special link to get 60% off Primal Life Teeth White. My suggestion is save time and you can get all your oral care routine from one spot where you know it works. Go to naturalteethwhiteners.com slash TMF, which is my special link. This will get you 60% off of the Primal Life Teeth Whitener Kit. If you guys want to check it out, it'll be linked down below. I would say you want to move fast here. You don't want to fall victim of the say Gartnick effect. This leads me to my next willpower hack. It's called the one minute rule. I want you to picture two versions of yourself. The first version wakes up and sees his tasks for the day. He starts by working through each one, only to become distracted by some TikTok video of some girl dancing with barely any clothes on. He then starts to put off some of his tasks, which leads him to feeling anxious and even less likely to finish those tasks. And throughout the span of the day, he puts an enormous amount of energy into not doing the tasks to the point where he could have done that task three times over. And now it's all he can think about. That feeling is known as the Sagarnik effect. The Sagarnik effect is a cognitive tension caused by unfinished tasks. This tension acts as a mental signal or a reminder that the task is not yet finished. This leads you to feeling stressed. The good news, however, is that there is a solution to this common problem. It is called the one minute rule. Going back to our previous example, let's picture a different version of yourself. After being distracted by a TikTok video, you decided to put your phone on do not disturb in another room and you get back to work. The tension is still there to do the task. So instead of telling yourself that you're gonna do it all now, you instead tell yourself that you're going to do one minute of work. And then you can go back to playing on your phone. In this situation, you will find that after doing something for one minute, the idea of doing more is much easier. There is less friction, therefore no Zygernik effect. And you can apply this method to everything. If you don't want to go to the gym, tell yourself that you're going to go and walk on the treadmill for one minute. If you can't be bothered cleaning your house, tell yourself that you'll just pick up your room for one minute. Keep it simple and so easy that it's impossible to fail. You will then overcome your procrastination and you won't have to use your previous willpower. But the Zygernik effect isn't the only cognitive barrier that is made worse by modern times because you also have decision fatigue. This takes me to hack number five. Remove 
decisions. Decision fatigue is exactly what it sounds like. You become too fatigued by the large number of decisions in your life. What should I wear today? What should I have for breakfast? What drink should I get from Starbucks? What should I have for lunch? What should I have for dinner? What movie should I watch? You get my point. Every single day, we are wasting an incredible amount of energy on decisions that do not matter. And some of the most successful people in the world understand this very well. Just take a look at any picture of Steve Jobs. Notice how he wore the same outfit from 1999 to 2010. Or what about the picture of Mark Zuckerberg? He wears the same thing every day. Why? Because they understand that worrying about what to wear every day depletes their willpower, which could be used on something much more important in their business. To hack your willpower and stop wasting energy, start by reducing the decisions you have to make in your life. You can wear the same thing every day or pick out your outfit the night before. You can create playlists so you aren't trying to figure out what music to listen to. The key is to design your life so you are hacking your willpower to use it on the most important things like your physical, mental, and financial health. Apply these five hacks now and you'll notice the difference immediately. I'm gonna drop two more videos here so you guys can continue to level up. See you boys next time.